Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, so welcome. This is uh, Axis, if not us, is uh, Ari Cole's inspirational and educational trip, and I'm happy that everybody made it on their vacation. I'm glad that this is a priority of yours, and I think uh, we're going to have a great day. I'll explain more about the trip afterwards, because I want to give as much time as we can have in Hill. Uh, I do want to recognize that uh, not only is Hill here, but uh, Hill's father and Ari's father, Rabbi Yonifold, who some of you know is sitting in the back over there as well, um, and he's here. So we're going to let Hill talk. I do want to give you just one thing. Hill is a professional speaker. It's what, like one of the things he does for, for a living. Um, but even so, this is obviously a very raw topic and one that he has yet to speak about. So understand that uh, this is like we're getting the first glance at uh, a family who's in tremendous pain and, uh, and recognize the, uh, the idea that this is, this is very raw for them. Um, it's very hard for them. And they have yet to really collect their thoughts and really understand everything that's happening to them and everything that's, that's going on. Um, and the public uh, factor is also you know, very disturbing and very hard to deal with. So, uh, so without further ado, I'll ask uh, Hill to come up and uh, talk to us. Thank you. Yeah, so I have zero recollection of the conversation I had with Rory about doing this talk. Zero. I remember asking him. Since we're little kids. Huh? Little kids. 40 years. Like that. So he says, I said, I'm going to do it. So I said, okay, I said, I'm going to do it. Let's do it. Uh, but, you know, as he said, I haven't spoken about this. I don't even know what I'm going to say. You know, you, you know. Um, and uh, my father's sitting in the back. And uh, in general, I think to do with this situation. You know, you know, you're not supposed to teach with your Rebbe in the room. You know that, right? At least you should say, you should at least. My father come back. He probably has a lot more to say. I definitely want to start with something that I heard from my father last night, which apparently he said several times over the last week. I didn't hear it until last night. I just took a couple of notes because it, it, it's chills inducing for me at least. I don't know how familiar you guys are uh, with Ari and Ari's work. Did, did you read a little bit about him? You saw pictures? You watched videos? Not yet? Cool. Okay, great. There, there were a couple of pictures that went pretty viral on the internet. Um, you know, I'm a tech guy. I see viral a lot. I see insane numbers when it comes to tech, right? But when it comes to, let's call it, activism, Israel, rarely do you see these, these type of numbers. I mean, I gave someone my phone that shit up, and I'm like, just res respond to 10,000 messages I'm getting a second. Almost not exaggerating. People who said, you know, I'm in, and this is not an exaggeration, I'm in Nigeria. I'm in a mosque in New York. I'm in Saudi Arabia. I'm in Canada, I'm in Australia, I'm in England. Are you impacting my life this way? Are you, are you impacting my life that way? We got a uh, message sitting in my parents' living, uh, dining room table, 100 feet from here, a three-page letter from a Muslim, religious Muslim woman in New York, who I work with in tech. She, this is an interesting story in and of itself, but she, she's completely Muslim. No connection to Judaism, nothing. She works exclusively with Israeli tech companies. Um, Israeli tech is amazing. Um, but she wrote, phenomenal letter about Ari and his impact on her and her, her mosque in New York. I don't know if I told you this, but her mosque in New York said prayers for Ari. That is most definitely the first idea of soldier that a mosque ever said a prayer for. She said it went without incident. And it's, pretty, it's pretty wild stuff. So it was really completely horizontal with impact and, and the ripples that he created. I still believe, fundamentally believe that we're just seeing the beginning of it because what happens when you drop a, a pebble, you know, the ripples begin and it continues, right? He, Someone said, drop a boulder on this world, and the ripples are just starting. But um, some of the pictures there are, again, going viral. I don't know if you've seen them, but there was a picture of uh, Ari Golan chauffeur with his talus over his head and he's filling. You saw that picture? You all saw that picture. Okay, so that was one. You know, he, he did blow chauffeur in his shul um, every year in, in Efrat. And uh, that was one. There was another video, again, that went pretty crazy viral of him standing in a Muslim quarter with a megaphone. Did you guys see that? The muazin, you know, but the, the loudspeaker in the Muslim quarter does their kodazara, whatever they say, and Ari was yelling Shema Yisrael Shalom Hashem 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 into a megaphone over and over and over again from a roof in the Muslim quarter. And that was a video you should, it's worth watching. Um, and my father said, and I experience this all the time, all the time. Now, I mean, I, I work, I don't know, 22, 6, right, 22 hours, 21 hours a day, I don't sleep much. Tech, right, tech is in Silicon Valley, so when I'm going to sleep, it's just the beginning of the day there, so I can't really, I don't sleep very much. 
But when I would finally go to sleep, Ari would continue with his Hasbara for Israel, with his fighting on the internet, with his historical accuracies or inaccuracies that our enemies, you know, and his, one of his biggest kind of narratives was stop using the word Palestinian. It's a made up term. It's a made up term by a, a massive terrorist named Yasser Arafat who made that term up. It was never a Palestinian Arab state. And today I'm seeing that narrative. I mean, I'm not saying Ari made it up. I don't know. A lot of people have been saying it, but Ari very much owned that narrative. He said, you know, he said it on TV all the time. He said, stop. You know, words matter. Words, words matter. I mean, you call them Boko Haram, you call them ISIS, you call them Hamas, you call them Hezbollah, you call them Palestinians, you're giving them legitimacy. Right? There is no such thing, and there never was such a thing as a Palestinian Arab state. And when people would say Palestinian, you say, just, just curious. Can you tell me when that Palestinian state was established? I'm sure you guys have seen people use this, this argument online, but Ari was very strong about that. But the point was, when I would wake up, whatever time of night I would wake up, when my father would wake up, what would Ari be doing? He'd be arguing with these people online. And I would always say to him, my father would always say to him, like, it's empty ears. These guys hate us. It's not about you know, occupation. It's not about this or that. It's about <coughs> old school anti-Semitism. So someone wrote the other day on Twitter, you know, once they hated the Jews, today they hate the Jewish state. So it's a different face on anti-Semitism. He would, 24-7, 24-6, he, he would be fighting online and, and arguing with these people who they don't really want to know the truth, right? Um, and he would be doing that. He just wouldn't sleep. Day in, day out. And again, one of my father said, I don't remember who said it, but someone said, you know, he didn't, he didn't live 45 years, he lived 90 years. Why? Because when we were sleeping, he was using night like he used day. Right? All day, all night, fighting for Israel. So that, that was one thing. And then at the end, I, you know, Ari was also very multifaceted. He did a lot of different things in his life. Usually we're, you know, I'm a pet cat, right? I mean, that's what I do. I like to I, I be on food a little bit, but I like my main thing, right? You're smiling to me on Instagram. I take a lot of pictures of food. I like it, but it's not my main thing. My main thing is tech, right? Ari right, had a lot of main things. Right, so he had Torah, which nobody ever saw him in a safer intent. Nobody. Um, he had the Mishmar that he did every Thursday night uh, at the Kotel, every Thursday night. Uh, he has karate, he's a third degree black belt. He's a beast. He's massive. At the, at the funeral, his, uh, his Mufaket, his sergeant in the army, said, you know, he originally, when he came to Israel, he volunteered for Tzahar, right? He's Maha. And then he transitioned into paratroopers. And then in Milouin, in reserve duty, Theory when you're 40, you're done. You get your tour, you get your uh, dismissal from the army. And Ari got that, he said, get up. I said, dismissal from the army, are you kidding me? And he, he then continued to volunteer for the army, and not just volunteer, so he was what's called in Israel, the Israeli army, beast. What does that beast mean? The guy who carries around the mag. You guys know what a mag is? It's a massive machine gun that was originally created to be put on a, a, gun, a, gun, a heavy shield, like a machine gun, a tank. Not for a human being to carry. That's how it was originally created, and Ari carried it. When I say he carried it, he didn't carry it from here to the door. He carried it 20, 50, 30, 40 kilometers within 15, 20 miles. So in the beginning, when he was 18, 19, 20, 21, 23, okay, he was a beast, you know, 30 degree black belt, great. He was 45 years old. His, his sergeant said at the funeral, he came over to him, like, I'm the last one to stop. I'm the last hype he's from Ari. Give me the map, enough for it. Like, you're not young anymore, let me take it from you. And I was like, get out of my face. This is my, this is my thing, you know? He's just the guy, you just wouldn't stop. And so, very, very, very core Ari was fighting. Uh, for Israel, strength and heroism, right? And physical, you know, online, offline and online, right? So when my parents named Ari 45 years ago, I'm, a, I'm by the way, six years younger than Ari. So I'm, I'm the next guy under. Um, so when they named Ari, you know, there was a norm. Nor what are some of your names? Give me some names. What's your name? That's right. Ariel. Ariel. Give me some names. Girl, what's your name? Ariella. Your name daughter? Cheers, Laura. Irina, it's not you guys. <laughs> what, 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 give me some names. Tamar. Tamar. Right, so you hear biblical names, right? Ari? I mean, Arie, we know, right? Ari, is that a biblical name? I don't know. So my parents named him Ari. People said, what's Ari? What, what is that? What, what's that? What's that name? Now, today we have all these weird names. and have heard all kinds of weird names. Ari is somewhat normal, quote unquote. But at the time, people said to them, what's Ari? Anyway, we know that obviously a name signifies a lot. Point is, uh, during or after the Shiva, my father said, you know what, let's, let's actually do a little research here and look at, what is this Ari thing? So, as my father said yesterday, we're not mystical people, right? I, I will say one thing that, that my father said is not his Torah, but I, I, before I get into this, I, I do want to tell a quick, quick story that gave me the chills. I'm not, no, no, I, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know anything about Kabbalah to know if, if I believe. I mean, of course it's a real thing. Of course it's so in the Torah. I just, Understand it, right? But uh, I got a phone call. I don't know if I told you this, but a rabbi called me who knows Ari uh, his whole life. 
basically. He said, when you get a chance, call me. I said, okay. I picked up the phone, I called him. He said, listen, do with this what you want, okay? If it, if it helps you, great. If it doesn't help you, ignore it. But he said two things. Number one, as we lit candles on Yom Kippur, we lit candle lighting. At the time of candle lighting, his GoFundMe page, right, was at 5,779 donations. That's the year, right? We're 5,779, correct? Right? Starting 5779, yeah. and candle lighting, 5779 donations. <coughs> nice. Again, I'm not saying it means anything, I'm saying it's a nice thing. But then he said something that was a little creepy for me. He said 10 years ago, uh, he knew two Chayalim, two soldiers that were injured badly. Um, one of them more badly than the other, and the one that was injured more badly ended up surviving, and the one that was injured less didn't survive. Turns out, the guy who survived his uh, grandfather's big Makubo. Big rabbi, big into Kabbalah, whatever. So he said, I spoke to the Makubo, and I said to him, what happened here? How, how, did, how, did, he, how did he survive? He was on death's, you know. So again, I'm, I'm going to say this to you guys, just take it with a grain of salt. I don't, I'm not, can't understand these things, but it's, I think it's a, maybe a nice thought. He said, um, that day, the Makubo, this rabbi was, uh, was invited to base the Shalom. He said, he's gone. He's gone. It's over. Today's his day. And he said, listen, his mother is, uh, his, mo his mother, uh, He's a widow, you know, he's had so much misfortune in his life, give him another chance. So he said, okay, he, whoever, I don't know, again, can't explain this to you, but he was told, we'll get another chance if he keeps Shabbos, he wears tzitzis every day. He said, okay. He went back, the guy survived, and he told this guy, he said, you have to wear tzitzis to keep Shabbos, and he did for the rest of his life. So that was the concept. What, what did he say to me about Ari? He said, listen, 12 years ago, in the Second Lebanon War, I don't know if you guys know this, but Ari talked about it a lot, he was that close literally an inch away from it being over. It missed the shrapnel, the explosion missed and hit his ephoda, you say ephoda, the protective whatever gear. Missed his heart by inches, mamash. And that day Ari made decisions in his life, he changed, he, he, you know, really impacted him. He's that close, right? Again, he was doing Torah before, I'm not saying he was, but he very much made an impact on his life, he changed things. And this rabbi said to me, he said, listen, you missed him by an inch last time, and he, they got him by an inch this time because the guy got a main artery and he moved over one inch, he'd be alive. And he said, I don't know, okay, I don't know anything. But maybe in Basin Shamala, that day, 12 years ago, was supposed to be his day. And someone pleaded and said, Ari needs to leave an impact on this world. He's going to leave an impact on this world. Give him another chance. He said, I believe that those last 12 years were borrowed time. Just like they missed him by, by an inch, they got him by an inch. And again, I don't know what to make of these things, but I thought, I thought it was a beautiful thing because at the end of the day, look what he did in the last 12 years in this world. You know, my uncle said last night, the last time you ever saw a funeral with that many people was with Moshe Feinstein. And everyone said to me, it was like a national funeral, this funeral. He's a guy sitting in a fraud on his keyboard, right? It's amazing. So I want to talk about that in a, 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 in a second, about the lesson, but I do want to go back to the story about the name Ari. So anyway, my, my, my father and my parents looked up, um, looked up the, the word Ari in, in the Torah. And, and as my father said, this isn't, this isn't drash, this isn't crazy, you know, you know, out of the out of the box thinking, this is Kumish and Rashi, which is the basic, right? I'm not talking about crazy things here. Basics. So, where does the word uh, Ari appear in the Torah? Hein am kavi yakum. The our arm, our nation will stand up like a baby lion. The chari nasa will be uh, elevated like a lion. Lo yishkav yochal teref. He won't rest until he. Consumes his enemies. The Dan Chalalim Yishtein, he'll, I'm going to ask that to explain that, but he'll fight with Gvura. So that's the puzzle. Okay, nice. What does Rashi say? Let's see. Okay, where's the Rashi here? Uh, second. Okay. The chari lachtof et hamitzvot to grab the mitzvot like a, like a lion. He'll bosh talit. What was that? What was that? That picture that we all saw go viral. Ari going chauffeur wearing talis on his head. What was the second video that we talked about that went viral? Ari yelling with a megaphone. What? 
Ikro et Shema. Ulaniach Tfilin. That's what Rashi explains the word Ari means. Someone who grabs the mitzvos, wears talis and tefillin, and, and says Shema. Okay? Lo Yishkav. Lo Yishkav Balayla Mitato. This is how Rashi explains the word Ari. Lo Yishkav Balayla Mitato. He will not rest on his bed. Achu Ochel Umechabel Tomazi Kabal Torfo. Until he demolishes all the predators and enemies who are coming to harm him. Okay, so that's one. The next time the word Ari appears, it says, Okay? So he will kara, he will kneel, uh, lie down like a lion. And like a baby lion, who can uh, who can get him up? Your anybody blesses you, etc. So what does Rashi say here? Let's find this Rashi. Wild stuff. Wild stuff. Okay. So Tarak Shachat Yari Kitarumo. Just as it's translated. You ready? How does Rashi explain Ari? Yitiashlu ba'atzam. They settle their land. The koch uvegura. It's strength. Third degree black belt, the Vibhura and terrorism. That's Rashi. Again, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. <coughs> right? I mean, if I were to write Ari's biography, there would be those two Rashi. Literally just nailed all of his, his facets. So it's pretty wide. I heard it last night for the first time. It's, for me, it's, it's kind of nuts. He didn't sleep. He, he didn't sleep until he got every single one of those Facebook comments. It sounds funny. But like, you know, the rest of us are like, oh God, he's trolling me, this guy, he's trashing Israel, calling him apart. I say, I, I block him on Twitter. I, I can't work who out. Who has caught my stuff, right? I just use the block button. It's my best friend. I already didn't do that. He answered every single one of them. And he didn't just answer them, you know, you're an idiot. He answered them, look, you're claiming X. This is the fact. Here, proof. Let me show you. There's never been a Palestinian Arab state. There's never been a flag. There's not a language. Who is the founder of it? Where did, when did it start? Show me. Here's... Artifacts, archaeological artifacts of, Jew, of Jews' presence in Eretz Israel thousands of years ago. You show me. You know, challenge people. He didn't sleep until he, he ended. He did that all day and all night. So I think that those two Rashi and Tzutim are, are pretty wild. Now, I, you know, again, like I said in the beginning, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a tech guy. I'm a business guy. I'm not, a, I'm not a, an activist. Obviously, everything I do for Israeli tech, I do in the back of my mind to promote Israel. But someone said to me, in a good way, they said it. They said it in a negative way. Tech is consensus. Who here doesn't like tech, right? Everyone likes tech. Right? Everyone likes smart. Everyone likes smartphones. Everyone likes this stuff. It's easy to promote that. So my job is easy. Our job is a little less easy. Promoting Israel. Now we're not going to get into political debates. We're not going to talk about it. I think we can all agree. I think most people can agree. The amount of um, hypocrisy surrounding Israel is at a peak. I've never seen anything like it in my life, and it frustrates me personally on a crazy level. But Ari, you know, for me, when you get frustrated with something, you, just, you give up. You're overwhelmed. You know, I can't. I'm not going to win them all. But the, but the answer is that Ari fought them all with, with one simple answer to the question: What are you doing? Then I would say, to myself, What are you doing? You're not going to convince these people. The answer is, you're not going to convince that guy. But who else is seeing that Facebook comment? Who else is, is trying to is on the fence about this conflict? And about the truth of our right to this land, and maybe perhaps is seeing that comment, and maybe this will change their mind, or maybe it'll bring them a little bit closer to change their mind. And again, in my world, this is easy to do, right? There's the big spectrum. It's all easy. But, but, but Ari did that day and night, and, he, and, and we didn't know, and I, I don't think he knew, fairly convinced he didn't know, um, truly how many people saw those Facebook comments and the impact that he left on this world. It's like I've never seen anything in my life. People, are writing me, I mean, day, all day, all day and all night, I'm getting messages from, you know, last night some, some student that Ari taught in an Israeli seminary. I mean, yeah, you know, you guys have a you have teachers, you know, some may be impacted a little more than others, but this was a 200 word email with pictures and videos and how he's so deeply impacted and people came to the shiva and said, I'm here, my children are here, my grandchildren are here because of Ari. And I think, um, and again, it sounded like a very big mystic today, but it's really not the case. But there is, you know, a lot of, I don't know what the word is, mysticism, a lot of crazy things happening in the universe. And, uh, you know, someone wrote, and this I'll definitely push back on, I'm not, 
you know, it all contradicts saying this. Someone wrote a whole list of, uh, of um, symptoms, not symptoms, of uh, characteristics of Mashiach ben Yosef. You see that? Mashiach ben Yosef performed Mashiach ben David. You guys saw this? I mean, did someone, someone was very distraught by this story, and they went to a Mekubal, and Mekubal said to them, apparently, I posted somewhere, you know, this is what's going to happen. It's going to unify the Jews. It's gonna, he's, he, was, you know, he said things that were very, not politically, I don't know what the Russian was, but the point was, I, I read this, and again, children do see, because there are a lot of weird characteristics of the things that are in this life, but again, a, a concept that the Father said last night, which I definitely never used, he definitely never used in his life, I can guarantee you, is that there was an element of secrecy, and I don't, secrecy maybe is not the right word, but, but lack of, of clarity about the impact and the ripples that are created in the world, and we see it now, how he's impacted people's lives. So, you know, there is this concept of the tzaddik nista, right? Some janitor in a, in a building cleaning the floor, and it turns out he's a lama right? You've heard this concept, right? I, who knows? Who knows these things? But, like, the fact that he did this without any of us knowing, to me, is a little bit wild. Um, and, and really, you know, I think really more important than anything, more, than, more important than personal loss, more important even than, than, than the, the loss in general, the grieving and everything like that, I think it's an important lesson for you guys. And this is really maybe uh, going a little bit closer to my world, because at the end of the day, you know, I use these social platforms, again, for, for tech. But oftentimes, you know, we think as human beings, does it really matter? Like, what's another, should I even respond to this person? What, what's it going to do? I'm not going to convince him. Maybe I shouldn't even, I'm not saying to waste your time on Facebook getting into political debates all day long. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is, though, that if Ari taught anything for this world, it's that the concept of I'm just one person, what can I really do? How can I really, can I really change the world one person? I think he answered that question uh, very, very clearly. Um, and again, I, 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 I have yet to see the beginning of it, I think. Think um, I get to see a level of influence like this, despite the fact that on social networks, you know, I have a lot of followers. I know how many people read my stuff, but I, I don't think I've ever seen. I'm definitely not not in my work. Have I seen this many people being not just reading an article or liking a Facebook post or commenting on a video, but being impacted, being touched, being moved to action? Do you know how many people have said to me, you know, not even talking about the separate Torah? The fundraisers, you know, this, this GoFundMe thing. Forget the fact that it's not a million, it's seventy thousand dollars raised for the family from people around the world. Forget the money. The fact that someone, I mean, what's the hardest thing to move someone to do? Is pick up their wallet, right? And again, I see this in my world, right? Raising money for a startup. It's the hardest thing is to convince an investor to give me your money, right? And that's an investment. So he's getting his money back in theory. People by the thousands, probably tens of thousands by now, I don't even know, took their wallet out of their pocket from around the world and gave money to this family that they knew from Facebook. Not even a family, they knew already from Facebook. I mean, these aren't people they're doing personally. And you know, one, one more thing, um, at the Shiva, or the day after the Shiva, I get, a, I get a message from a very, very, very big CEO, like one of the biggest CEOs in tech. He happens to be Jewish, but he never met Ari. He runs a one and a half billion dollar company. Um, you know, a big deal in our world. In my world, and he writes me the following question, and I, and I was trying to, to get um, control of all my messages. Right, I was getting so many, and, but he's an important guy, and someone I was lucky that I caught it because I was sure missing a lot of messages. He, wrote, he writes me, "I just need a, a simple number. What is Miriam, Ari's wife's uh, financial situation? One to ten. Said, ten being she's great, one being she's horrible. What what is her situation?" I said, "I don't know. So I, I'm like, I we haven't even talked about that, but you know, I would imagine she's going to have a lot of expenses. I would imagine." I don't know, two, three, four, I have no idea. He said, okay, enough said. That day, I'm driving home, and I see a guy I know from Beit Shemesh walking up my block. He lives in Ramat Beit Shemesh, I live in Beit Shemesh. What are you doing there? Maybe, or maybe he's from the Nakamoto, I don't know. So I get out of my car, and I walk over, and I said, what are you doing here? He says, the CEO, this guy who he works for, says, he, he told me to drop something off. Because the CEO's in New York. He's here, he's his employee here. here. He says to him, told me to drop something off. I said, what did, what did he do? He's like, he never even met us. He doesn't know us. I come home, and there's a objectively massive check. Not millions of dollars, but a, a massive check he's just giving to Miriam. This isn't, you know, this is somebody that, that from the other side of the world was impacted somehow. I don't know, I didn't ask him that. I, I, I had to speak to him about why he felt the need to do that. He, he never met him. So the answer is, you know, Ari um, 
through his work online, through his, um, you know, what he did for Chayalim. The end of Chayalim. Somebody told me, somebody came to the Shiva and said that he was a Chayal, it was, um, it was a, like a day that was, uh, what's, it, what's it called, uh, Sharab. Heatwave. What? Heatwave. Heatwave. It was like obscenely hot, right? They could not train. They were just sitting there in this base, like, cooking, basically, in the sun. All of a sudden, a truck pulls up. Not, anybody here? Nobody's in the army. That's not the Israeli army. So I, I, I was in the Israeli army. I'm telling you, but you're in your you know uniform and you're at phone, you have your gun on you, and it's 115 degrees outside. There's pretty much nothing closer to hell than that. It was it, it's the worst. So they're sitting there in their base cooking, and, uh, and all of a sudden a truck or car pulls up. Ari gets out with ices for everyone. I don't know whatever amount of time it was. Like, it's such a small thing. This ice changed everything. Bro. Like that day turned from dark to light. You know. And it's just, Again, just one story, but the point is, through his work with Chayalim, through his work online with, with different organizations and raising money for Chayalim and traveling around the world talking about Israel, you know, I, again, I saw the amount of shuls. You guys came just now, or you were in the state from that? When did you arrive here? When did they arrive here? Mm-hmm. You've been here? Yeah. Okay, so I don't know if you spoke to your parents back home, uh, home back in the U.S., mm-hmm. but, uh, okay, you got that, thank you. Um, but every shul. Every shul. Someone this morning just sent the, uh, the, the the sign that was up in, in uh, one of the peanut shuls, but in Australia, every single shul in Melbourne and, and Sydney had either you know talks, tefillos, signs. Every shul across the world. How does one person do that? And that's again, that's that's really what I want to leave you with in terms of the message is whatever you guys are doing in life, it doesn't matter. Really, it doesn't matter. If it's Israel, great. If it's business, also great. You know, and again, I another time different opportunity. Well, I'll talk to you guys about what I do in business, and maybe you'll understand what I mean and how this translates into business. The bottom line is, though, you know, I've seen it in small scale. I did it in much larger scale. One person can change everything. And I don't mean change everything for another human being. I mean change everything for the world. Quite literally the world. It's millions and millions of people. There's no way to quantify this, but it, it is 100% millions of people that were impacted by one person, and most of that impact was done with 10 fingers on a keyboard from the comfort of his home. Again, he did his thing. I'm not, I don't mean to be little. He was running around doing his activism and everything, but at the end of the day, the ripples and the effect and the impact that he's had on people was done on the internet. And you know, while the internet is obviously, um, has, has the other side of the coin, a very dangerous place, you've got to be careful in terms of what you say and you know, accuracy and things like that. For example, someone, I don't know if you saw this, but someone posted a, a, a story about Ari's daughter, Anel Al. I don't know if you guys saw this. She was flying on El Al, and that uh, El Al, you know, heard about it. They didn't want her to find out, so they cut off the internet, upgraded her to first class, and she wouldn't find out. And then, you know, they will be calm face in the, in the Facebook post. They went all over the place. It's not a true story. She was flying by United. United did cut the internet. They did offer her up. At first, it wasn't El Al. The point is, you be careful what you say on the internet. It's, it's a dangerous thing. A lot of, you know, fake news uh, spreads. But at the end of the day, the internet is the biggest megaphone we've ever had in our lives. It amplifies your message you know, in an unprecedented manner. Nothing ever has, has given you the, the ability to amplify your message. So if you're spreading truth, and that's the word I want to leave you with. There's no political correct. That Ari's life was not, you know, let's not get mixed up with what's true and what's politically correct. There's truth. There are facts. You can say all you want that, you know, they're attacking us because of occupation. But in 1929, when there were no occupations, there were no settlements, Jews were being slaughtered in Hebron. So what, what was then? Right? He said that all the time. One example. What, before 1967, there, there, was no, there were no settlements. There was no, there was no Arab terror. Like, this is such blatant black and white truth, and yet, of course, people ignore it. Oh, so it's occupation. What do you mean? People wrote to me on Twitter. Horrible people wrote to me. Well, we just settled. We stole land. These things can happen. Really? Like, irrelevant of the human basic decency to say that to someone, but it doesn't make a difference. That aside, facts. I already believe in politically correct. The UN can say whatever the heck they want. Let's talk facts. Let's talk historical facts. That's what Ari did. And so if you're if you're spreading those facts, again, it doesn't make a difference in what area you're doing it in. You need to know that Ari's lesson, among many, many other lessons, in my opinion, for you as young adults, is that there is no limit to what you can do to impact this world and create ripples and change people's lives. That's the bottom line. Uh, like I said, I think we're just getting started. I think we're going to hear a lot more, and I do think led an extraordinary life that was unparalleled as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know, I, I'll just leave you with a, a lot of people ask me why I didn't speak at the funeral before my brother spoke. I'm not going to get into it, but I, but I said to people, how choking me, 
the only thing I could have added to the situation was that I had this host to be Ari's practicing um, punching bag for his karate when we were kids. That was my only added, you know, unique value, unique selling point was that he beat the heck out of his kids. But other than that, you know, everything was said by the brothers, by my father, by his wife. Everyone said what he said. I didn't have anything, you know, to add really. And it was 2 o'clock in the morning, there were thousands of people there, no air conditioning. It was a wild thing. If you watch it online, live stream, I don't know, 100, 200,000 people watch this thing. It was completely nuts. Um, but yeah, that's really what I want to end with and say to you guys, whatever it is you're doing, if you have a thought in your head, if you ever put a thought across in your head saying, Maybe I can't really do anything. You know, who am I? I did it in my world, you know, starting with 10 fingers on a keyboard in tech. I already did it on a much, much larger scale uh, and really changed world opinion. Again, is the UN converted yet? No. We're getting there. But even in the UN, they, you know, they talked about already. I don't know if you saw that. But the point is, it's across the world. He's literally, not figuratively speaking, literally speaking, he's changed world opinion. One person. So that's really the important thing for you guys. Whatever it is you're doing in life, go all in. Truth. At the end of the day, we'll win, and uh, you can impact people's lives using the internet. Thanks, guys. Any questions? Any questions? Come on. You can clap. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs>